I wanted to join uh, Hassel because it represented a international practice, uh, something which I've been uh, very keen to uh, understand and, and enjoy as we become a society and uh, uh, a, a design leader across the world. And for me, the work that I'd been doing in, in the UK was representative of what Hassel, I believed, uh, were looking for and, 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 and striving for but uh, of a different scale, uh, different preoccupation, and something which was going to have a much greater impact than, than the UK was, on its own was able to do. So I was trying to understand the work that Hassel was, was, uh, was developing. And it looked, uh, it looked very creative, it looked very innovative, and, 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 and bold, and there was a sort of an, an adventurous spirit about it which, which came across in, in, in the projects that I was looking at. And, and every individual that I spoke to in the journey to get to Hassel was uh, consistent in, in what they said. The conversations were consistent. The desire to be brave was consistent. The approach that I uh, w w could, could see that Hassel were taking was, was one of uh, understanding context, understanding and responding to uh, complex brief requirements, uh, taking, taking a, um, a way of thinking which was exploring ideas. Uh, so it was exploring form, it was exploring the relationship of that form to, uh, to, to, to the, the whole historical context as well of the places that we're designing in. I believe that uh, there are many architectural practices that, that say they're doing that. Um, and, and aren't actually really exploring that. They're not really understanding. Um, th they're not really understanding the basis of that thinking. They're not exploring it in, in adequate detail. It's it's very superficial. And what I liked about the Hassel approach is you you don't know what you're going to get. Uh, you're, you 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 know you're going to come to the practice with a set of requirements, you know, functional requirements, financial requirements and, and brief requirements. But you don't know what the end product's going to be. It could be something very, very different to what you thought it might be. And I think that's very exciting. If you go to other um, major, major practices and international practices, you tend to know what you're going to get. And that is the offer that they give you. But what we're going to give you is something, is something potentially unique. And I think that's a strong differentiator uh, in the UK market and in, and in the international market too. I think clients come to uh, bring a project to a practice like Hassel with, with a certain level of expectation. And that expectation is, is to go beyond uh, what they might have preconceived ideas about and gain real value in, in, in the Hassel way of thinking. And, and if we can uh, develop their thinking, develop their ideas to a, to a much greater step, so, so, so to make it, take it five steps further than, rather than one step further, then the value that they can get, get, get out of that is going to be very significant. It's going to change the way, for example, in a workplace situation, it's going to change productivity, it's going to change efficiency, it's going to change people's lives as well. It's going to change the whole, the whole environment that, that, that we are working in, spending a lot of time in, for example, as well. And if we can bring a whole new approach to that by making them think differently or helping uh, facilitating different thinking, then uh, we can provide much greater clarity and value for them. And ultimately, Cons uh, and ultimately help them on the areas that they're also going to be concerned about, which is, uh, which is cost and efficiency and, and productivity.